So um, next up, we have Chris Roberts. Uh, Chris is a software engineer with around 36 years of programming experience under his belt, um, mainly for audio related companies. Chris has one of the most impressive LinkedIn experience sections I think I've ever seen. So you're really in for a treat today. And Chris is gonna be talking to us about value tree wrappers for juice specific value trees. Um, everyone give a warm welcome to Chris. Thank you, Rachel, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so I started, you know, I've been using juice for probably 15 years now. Uh, but I didn't dabble in value trees until about five years ago. Um, and if you've not watched Dave Rowland's uh, ADC talk on value trees, I think that's the best education videos there are, uh, giving you a good, nice round understanding of what's possible with them. Um, after I'd been using them for a while, I, I started to think about uh, things like having to write value tree code every place that I needed to access that information. Um, and I also started to give consideration to uh, implementing the entire data model set for applications uh, with value trees. Um, and uh, to make them easier to use, I came up with this idea of what I'm calling a wrapper, uh, but it's really a, a domain specific class for something that is using value trees under the hood to do its work. Um, and then you get, of course, the value tree benefit without having to think about value trees as the user of that, of that class. Um, one of the ones I like to talk about as an easy example is the idea uh, in an audio application of a transport. Um, and you know, historically speaking, right, we'd have code hooked up uh, where the state of the transport is passed through some callback maybe, or some parameter that you pull to get the information from. Um, and so in some applications I've written, a transport value tree wrapper class. Um, if you hand it the value tree that is for that uh, thing, uh, the, uh, you can communicate the trans through the transport through the setters and the getters, and you can get the callbacks uh, through callbacks just like with value trees. Um, so the idea again is you, you create a uh, domain or context specific class that's got a series of setters and getters uh, for accessing the values inside uh, the value tree, which also gives you type safety again, because with value trees, you kind of lose your type safety because a value tree contains a var, a juice var, and a juice var can contain a variety of types of information. And so uh, this gives you your, uh, your type safety. Uh, also gives you the ability to uh, you know, hook in uh, constraints and things like that uh, to those specific parameters. Um, and then just like with the uh, juice button classes, now we have these on callback type things, uh, the value tree wrappers use that same uh, methodology. So on uh, state changed might be, um, or in transport state changed might be the callback you have in the transport wrapper. And so you can just sign up for that to know if the transport state's changed. Um, the extension for me that I've gone with this now is that I'm writing applications that have two main value trees. Uh, one is the persistent value tree, uh, which is attached to another class I have called the value tree file class. Um, if you hand your value tree to this file, file class, it monitors any changes to the value tree and then will do a deferred write out to a backing file for that value tree. Uh, so what what makes this easy is then again, if you have a place in your application that you have some information that you want to be stored uh, persistently with your application, simply by adding your value tree to the persistent value tree, you have to do no more work uh, and it will be saved in your properties file and restored from the properties file when, when your app starts. Uh, then of course, the other one is the runtime uh, value tree, uh, which is all the data that changes at runtime and doesn't get stored. Uh, so the format of the applications now, instead of passing pointers around between objects, pretty much everybody's initializer gets the top level of the persistent tree and the top level of the runtime tree. Um, and that's just a common, you know, common practice in, in this code. Uh, then within the, the code that receives those two value trees, um, you might 
uh, then take that value tree and hand it off to the wrapper that you want to get the object for. So again, system started up, uh, some piece of audio code has created the transport uh, value tree on the runtime uh, main value tree. And so in some other place of code, you simply hand that runtime value tree into the transport wrapper code and it will find the child and give you access to that uh, on, the, on the main tree. Um, and, and as implied here, I've also started uh, using it again to even decouple code where instead of having the play button code actually call a function that starts playback or stops playback, um, it simply uses the value tree to communicate that. And so again, uh, you've decoupled the code uh, through passing this information through, uh, through the value tree system. And it's easy to access some other piece of information without having to think about, well, how do I get to that class that has that piece of data that's other, you know, someplace else? Um, the other piece that I've added to this, um, because I've been using this for uh, talking to uh, hardware devices, is the value tree wrapper uh, base class has this idea of being able to turn on and off um, the feature of a value tree, which is to not do any callbacks if you call a setter and you're setting the same data. Um, you want to be able to have it go through, even if it is the same data, if you're sometimes working with hardware because a piece of hardware has been plugged in, you don't actually know the state of that hardware. So when you're sending the data to it, you actually want it to send all of the data. So you have the ability to uh, tell the, uh, the value tree wrapper you're using that you don't want to filter uh, the non-change data. And then you can do all your operations and know that all the callbacks happen even when the data hasn't changed. And then you can turn it off. Uh, I've actually created uh, much like the scoped lock class and um, things like that in Juice. I uh, created a scoped object uh, that also will allow you to turn this off or turn it on uh, for a given context. And then when you leave scope, it reverts it back to what it was before. Um, yeah. I think that you know it's it's a relatively simple idea, um, and uh, some people who I've explained it to have talked about there's a lot of boilerplate up front. Uh, but the the trick is uh, when you hear from the people who are are using it now, and they're like, uh, "Oh my God, that was so simple! I just had to you know use the wrapper to wrap the thing and sign up for the callback, and I'm done, and it all works." Um, and uh, so yeah, that's that. Nice, and. Is there, is there a place where anybody would be able to see an example of, of how this would be used in live in the wild? Uh, I have not put it uh, out onto any public GitHub stuff yet, uh, but I'm planning on it. Um, okay. And so, yeah, so I'll include some uh, examples with it <clears throat> within that. Okay. Uh, um, do, you, do you know your GitHub, your GitHub URL off the top of your head? By chance? Uh, I think I'm CPR2323. CPR 2323. Okay, yes. cool. Uh, yeah. So just so I can put that in the video description and yep. I, will, I will put it here in the chat as well. Yep. Um, yes, thank you very much, Chris. It's very sure. enlightening. And, um, and we're looking forward to seeing some uh, example code so we can actually, um, yeah, so we can see, see how it works in the wild and uh, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be very valuable for people. As you mentioned, uh, Dave Rowland's talk on value trees is uh, probably one of the iconic uh, audio programming talks in all of um, ADC yeah. um, history uh, or audio programming history. So it's essential watching for anybody that's interested in juice um, parameters and, uh, and value trees, the audio processor value tree state is related to that as well. And um, yeah, we appreciate you coming in. Um, cool. Yeah, and I, I, I look forward to doing it as well to start getting some feedback because um, like a lot of things, the longer you use them, right, the, the more mature the code can get. And, and there might be some other ideas that could be, uh, you know, uh, other people would be uh, aware of uh, when they start playing with it. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Um, great. So with that, just a, just a few little announcements before we sign off. Uh, first, 
of all, I'd like to thank Alex, Rachel, and Chris for, uh, for their talks. Uh, really great having the pleasure of being in the company of, of you three and um, you know, very lucky to, uh, to have this meetup uh, happening each month. And speaking of uh, our monthly meetup, we're going to um, confuse people and uh, tell people that our next meetup is actually going to be a hybrid meetup. So uh, I'm proud to announce that our next meetup will be both in person and online at the same time. And we will be live from London. Uh, and the date is going to be on Wednesday, the 11th of May. And we will have some very special speakers, including Rachel. Rachel will be speaking for, uh, the, for the meetup. And we have some other ones that uh, I don't want to announce just yet, um, but I will uh, create a, uh, I will have a flyer created and um, we'll be able to announce probably later on this week, as well as venue and time. So uh, we're very excited for that. Um, also, as Rachel mentioned, if you happen to have any questions regarding um, presentation on DSP Corner, please be sure to join us in our uh, developer community on Discord. And the link for that is uh, theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash Discord. Uh, also, if you'd like to submit uh, a proposal or giving a talk here at the Audio Programmer Meetup, you can do so. And the link for that is in the description below, or if you'd like to write it down really quickly, it's theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash meetups with an S at the end. With that, I think it's a good time for us to sign off. Uh, thank you once again to everybody who tuned in. Uh, and to continue the conversation, please join us on Discord. Uh, we we, uh, we, we want to talk and continue this interaction. And um, this video will be made live to view afterwards. So uh, we hope that it's very helpful for you. And uh, with that, we will sign off and we will see you next month uh, live from London. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody.